listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. Time it is perfect. WWE Monday Night Raw review. We are coming to you live from New York City, and we had ourselves one hell of a boring ass show tonight. Well, last night. But today is Tuesday, the 28th, the very last day of February. God, yo, do y'all believe, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all believe we in March already? This is craziness. It was just like the summertime, and now it's March already. God damn. Anyway, hit the goddamn like button. Nope. I said, hit the goddamn like button. Like, follow, share, and subscribe to the channel. What the Wrestling Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow What the Wrestling on Spotify and Anchor. Let us not waste any more time. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. It's I, RJD here. Welcome to What the Wrestling. I cannot wait for Resident Evil 4 to come out. Y'all do not understand, man. Yes, I know. We're here to talk about wrestling. But goddammit, I can't wait for Resident Evil 4. I can't. I cannot wait for Resident Evil 4 to come out. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, RJD here. Welcome to What the Wrestling. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. As always, we are going to quickly run down the Monday Night Raw review. We got... Uh, AEW this Sunday. We got AEW on Wednesday. It should be great. Actually, AEW tomorrow as far as Wednesday. So it should be good. We don't talk about NXT no more. Nope. We don't talk about Rampage no more. Nope. Maybe when they make the shows better, we'll figure it out. But thank you for everybody for rocking with your boy. So let's talk about Jimmy Uso. What's good, Us? So we had Jimmy Uso and Sola Sokoa coming out talking about how Jimmy is down for his brother. He rides for his brother. His brother is everything that he uh, wants to rock with. And when he hurts, the Uso hurts. When the Uso hurts, he hurts. <laughs> and Jimmy was basically riding for his brother. Street Profits come out. Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford, they have themselves a good old match. But unfortunately, they fall short as Solo Sokoa, Samoan Spike. Ah, to Mr. Angelo Dawkins and the Street Profits lose. The Bloodline wins because we the ones. So the Bloodline wins, and that's what she wrote. Real quick, let's talk about it. Montez Ford is a beast, goddammit. Perfect. Montez Ford. Listen, I know Montez Ford had a great showing at the pay-per-view Elimination Chamber. Montez Ford looked great last night with the hot tag. They are grooming Montez Ford and Bianca Belair now have a reality show coming out. They are grooming Montez Ford because they are putting a lot behind him. And I am not mad at that at all. Angelo Dawkins is a hell of a wrestler, but they are pushing Montez Ford to be the star. I would not be surprised if these, if the Street Profits break up this year. Like, this will be the year that they break up. It would not surprise me. No lie. Montez Ford, good shit. Uh, so good stuff here. What else happened on this show? I will get to the main event of the evening last, 
But for now, we're just gonna run down what happened. We had uh, Cowboy Brock come out and he had a segment with Mr. MVP in the VIP lounge. And he accepted his challenge to Omos at WrestleMania. Get the fuck out of here! Who asked for this? Who wants this? Why are we getting this? Is Vince McMahon back in charge of creative? This looks like a Vince McMahon thing. Oh, hey, uh, hey. We got Omos, C73, and Brock Lesnar, and, and you know, um, two big guys. Uh, yeah, it'll be great. Such good shit. <laughs> Perfect. Man. Nope. Get out of there with that garbage. Brock Lesnar said, sell me, sell the people on this match. Go. And he proceeded to say how if you beat up a man as the beast, the man beat the man is, you know, beat up. But if you're a giant and you beat up, you try to beat up the beast, the beast will fight you back. And I understand what he was trying to do. I ain't mad at it. Bro, uh, Bobby said, uh, Cowboy Brock said, you know what? You have sold me, my brother. I accept. And you know what? Let's drink. We're going to call this White Lightning. He drank it, gave it to MVP. MVP said, I'm good. Why don't I, why don't I drink champagne? And Brock was like, you're not going to let me drink by myself, are you? And he said, no, no, of course not, Mr. Lesnar. Of course not. Let's do it. Let's do it. So <laughs> he proceeded to drink the, the moonshine, a.k.a. White Lightning. And uh, he tried to swig it, but he had the stink face. And he spit it, Triple H style, right into Brock Lesnar's face. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. And Brock Lesnar proceeded to F5 him into the ground. <laughs> oh, man. He's stupid. And then Brock Lesnar took his cowboy hat and walked out. So, it looks like we are getting Omas and Brock Lesnar. Nobody wants this bullshit, but looks like it's something that we're going to have to deal with for WrestleMania. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Nope. We had Cody! Cody Rhodes versus Chad Gable. And Cody Rhodes wins with the Cody Cutter. Right after, uh, right before the crossroads. And he gets the win. Chad Gable is very, very good. Listen, we know how good Cody is. I'm talking about underrated people. Chad Gable is severely underrated, and he is very good at what he does. So we're going to give him his flowers Perfect. right now. Shout out to Chad Gable. We had the Judgment Day cut a promo backstage with Dominic Mysterio telling his father that he'd be at SmackDown on Friday. Rhea Ripley talking about her WrestleMania match with Charlotte, saying that she doesn't need to get at Charlotte Flair because she's big dog. And um, and Finn Bella beat him. Kyle O'Reilly beat him. <laughs> Finn Balor telling Edge that their rivalry would be over. It's over when I say it's over. <laughs> I can't do accents. But shout out to Finn Balor, man. I love Finn Balor. Um, what I would say to this is, I thought the blow-off feud, I thought this blow-off was going to be Elimination Chamber. Apparently, they're going to continue it. There are, there are rumblings that we're going to get the Demon versus Edge in a cell at WrestleMania. I don't think it'll be a cell. Maybe it'll be a cage match, but I don't think it'll be a cell. So... If this is true, then Finn Balor 
if he comes out as the demon, he needs to beat Edge 80% of this match. 80%. Because if you're going to bring out the demon again, who we haven't seen since the demon lost to Roman Reigns, after uh, somebody from the sky unbuckled the rope out of nowhere, he has to be more aggressive. He has to be like, in your face, I'm going to beat you up. There's nothing you can do. And if Finn Balor is like that, and he fights differently, and he dominates Edge for 85 to 90% of the match, but Edge finds a way to escape the cage or whatever, I'm cool with that. But if it's the same old Finn Balor shit versus Edge, then that's stupid. You stupid. So let's see what they do. We had Asuka beating Carmella when Carmella took 60% of the match and they had like an 8-9 minute match and Carmella took most of the match. Get the fuck out of here! When Asuka has the new face paint, the new persona, she's supposed to be this badass killer, but yet she's selling for Carmella? You stupid. Get the fuck out of here! Moving on. Candice LeRae beat Piper Niven. Seth Rollins was on Miz TV talking about how he wanted Logan Paul to come out there and fight him. They had this whole segment where it was pre-taped, obviously, but suspend your disbelief, people. You had Seth Rollins beat up Miz, took his phone, had Miz's phone, and made him open it via auto open with his face he called logan paul on facetime and then they had on the graphic that logan paul was talking to seth rollins and he said you know what i'll be there to face you man to man next week so i look forward to seeing the fireworks there this crowd was hot for seth rollins they were hot for cody they were hot for montez ford and they were hot for the title change that happened at the end of the match. Uh, at the end of the day. Other than that, this crowd was Masuda. So we're going to boo the crowd. You guys could have did better. We had uh, Bobby. Bobby Lashley beat Elias in a squash match. And we had Johnny Gargano beating Otis. Uh, with the one final beat. And Otis had requested a match after Maxine Dupois said, <laughs> said she wanted it to be ringside for Otis's match. But during the match, Dexter Loomis caused a distraction by attempting to kidnap Masse, setting up the finish, which was the one final beat for the win. Shout out to Johnny Gargano, who said, I am proud of my wife for being Piper Niven with a roll-up after a three-minute match. Uh, not good at all. Stop the cap. Damn, son. Yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. That kind of sucked. But the main event, we had the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship belts on the line. Becky Lynch and Alita versus Damage Control. And Damage Control lost. We had Bailey trying to interfere. Trish Stratus came out of nowhere. Surprise, motherfucker. Trish Stratus is back. She came out of nowhere and pushed Dam uh, Bailey off the edge. And after that, Lita was able to hit the moonsault for the win on Dakota Kai. And they are the new. Tag Team Champions. Perfect. Can't be mad at that. Nope. So, all in all, this was a good episode of Monday Night Raw. I know I'm running it down quick, but I had to just get this through. Me and Isaac will be doing AEW Revolution predictions tomorrow. 
Me and Isaac with the predictions tomorrow is going to be great, fantastic. Gotta love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. So stay tuned for that. As for this, this was your Monday Night Raw review. It was a rather boring show. Only a couple of things that were kind of interesting. The crowd wasn't really into it. Besides those four things. And it is what it is. So with that being said, I'm out. Catch you guys tomorrow. Me and Isaac. We out of here. Peace. Don't the monk go.